Hello fellow gamers and welcome to another video from the Unkempt Gamer. Thank you so much for joining us once again. In our last video, we took a look at whether or not the wooden spoon can help prevent parasites. Much to many people's dismay, it didn't work. Some of you were a little irked by that too, and uh, I, I do apologize for that. But let's take a look at a few more theories that I took from the comments in our community, and let's debunk them together. If you haven't seen the other wooden spoon video, I can provide a card in the top right of this video right about now, and I'll include it as a link at the end of this video too. Before we get started, I'd like to thank our community for picking their brains and providing me with these theories, as well as Tomek and Jacek, two awesome members of the Creepy Jar development team. All right, let's get started. Now that we've gotten our campfire started, I'm gonna go ahead and drop some dirty water in here to go ahead and get it clean so that we can get started on our theory debunking video. And we're gonna let the ones at the bottom cook up as well. But we'll start with an easy one to confirm or debunk. Today's theme ingredient is tapir meat, the most nutritious meat in the game. And as you can see with soups, on a side note, it's the most nutritious meal in the game, short of eating it raw. While the meat is still cooking at the bottom, as you can see with the wooden spoon, you cannot interact with either cooking food or cooked food. So it's not something that you can interact with at the same time. Also, having the spoon in your pack does not increase the effectiveness of whatever you're drinking. As you can see here, we still cannot interact with the cooked soup. And as we drink it, we get the normal amount of nutrients one would get when drinking tapir soup. If you're wondering how I was able to drink from it twice, that's because Jake is fully hydrated. And as you can see there, we cannot interact with an empty bowl either, nor can we interact with water that is being cooked, or I should say cleansed. And let's take a look here. Also, while it is cooking in the bowl, you cannot interact with that either, which disproves quite a few theories that our community has had about the wooden spoon and cooking. Now, we're gonna let the meat finish cooking at the bottom on the campfire. Once that's done, we're going to give eating with the spoon in our pack a shot. First off, you cannot interact with the cooked tapir meat on the campfire. You also can't move your spoon over into the food section. So there's not really a way that you can interact with the meat that you have. Putting it on the floor has an identical effect as well. There's not really a, a way that I can see that one can interact with this food. Next, we're going to see if it lowers the chance of getting parasites when you're dirty and when you're drinking from soup bowls. And I have a very simple, very easy test that we can do to confirm or debunk this. Let's get as dirty as we can. First, what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna drop the wooden spoon down on the ground. That's a little, a little too close to what I'll be working with. It'll be interacting with it over and over again. We're gonna get as dirty as we can. And let's run another test. It's gonna be pretty simple and straightforward. We're totally dirty, as you can see, no wooden spoon. I'm gonna drink all six sips out of these bowls. And as you can see, Jake does not get dirty. Does not, I'm, I'm sorry, he does not get parasites at all, which statistically speaking, he should have gotten it at least once. And what about the wooden spoon making soup more effective? Like whether you have it on you or not. I know it's a little bit of an ambiguous term, but if you have the spoon on you, the nutrients are more effective versus if you don't have the spoon on you. Let's see if it changes the nutrients with and without the spoon. Gonna put this last piece of meat in here. 
and we will just take a look at these nutrients before and after we have the spoon in our possession. So this is before. And this is after. And as you can see, we still have the same amount of nutrients in the soup, regardless of whether we have the wooden spoon in our possession or not. Now I'm about to present to you some of the more unique, some might call it weird theories that I have seen in our community. But before we do that, if you've gotten this far, I'd like to think that you enjoy what you've been watching. And if you do, please don't forget to hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. It makes me feel good, but I think it also does something with the YouTube algorithm as well. And since we're on the topic of self-promotion, don't forget to follow me on Twitch. There's a link right there on the screen, and if you go down into the description of the video, you will also see a link to Kick. I am considering live streaming on Kick as well. I don't know if I'll be doing Green Hell, but I'll probably be playing some other video games over there. If you want to see me do something a little bit different, I highly recommend checking me out there. Now, someone in our community had mentioned, hey, maybe the wooden spoon will do something with the mud mixer. Maybe we can get more bricks out of it. But as you can see, that's not something that we can interact with when it comes to the mud mixer itself. And now that we're on the topic of mud, let's go ahead and make some mud molds right here. Somebody else had a really cool, unique idea. Hey, maybe you can interact with a wooden spoon and the molds. As you can see here, it is not something that you can interact with. I'm just gonna put these down here on the ground and hold one as well. Check this out. They also said someone, and maybe it was somebody else. Hey, what about the forge? Maybe we could put something in there. And as you can see, you cannot put anything in either the fuel section or the bottom portion of the forge. So I don't think the wooden spoon has much to do with the forge, the mud mixer, or mud molds. I will say this, those were two very creative theories right there. Now on a final note, there's only one more crazy wild theory that I can think of before we go, and that is in the Spirits of Amazonia Part 3 update. When you go into your first dream trial, when you walk over next to the river, you see these crabs with spoons in their hand. What does it mean? The green hell world may never know. <laughs> Folks, but with that out of the way, I would like to wish you happy building, safe building, and many blessings. Thank you so much for watching, folks. Take care.